When I first decided to do a through hike, I was stressing out so much about what gear I was gonna bring because I knew I needed gear that would actually survive that kind of the journey. And the reality is I knew that the gear that I had been using over the past couple of years just wouldn't make it. And that meant I wasn't going to make it. But you see this picture here? That's me on the, my final day on the GDT. The reality is this trip didn't look anything like I was expecting it to. But just look at the enthusiasm on my face in this picture. I bet you're wondering what it takes to get there, to moments like these. And the answer is right here in this backpack. This is everything that actually took me to the end of what's known as the wildest through hike. I'm not gonna talk to you about everything that didn't make it. I might do that in another video, but I wanna talk about the gear that actually lasted. More than that, I wanna talk about five key pieces of gear that did more than just last. They surpassed my expectations. Gear that I know will take you on your wildest dreams, wherever they might be. So let's get to it. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the backcountry. My name is Jesse and this channel is all about getting beginners backpacking. And in many ways, I felt like I was a beginner all over again while I was choosing the gear that I was gonna bring on my through hike. So let's start with the obvious one my tent. This is the Durston Gear Xmid One Person Tent, one of the original models from Drop.com. Now, the reality is I would love to say that this tent was one of the pieces of gear that exceeded my expectation, but I've actually been using it for about three years, so it didn't exceed my expectation, did exactly what I expected it to, which was be awesome. I definitely highly recommend this tent. Dan has since upgraded and remodeled some of the different features with this tent, but let's talk about backpacks. There's a little bit of a story here. This is the Shadowlight 45 liter backpack from Outdoor Vitals. I started with the 60 liter shadow light and long story short, due to my own user error, I actually broke that backpack and had to switch to another backpack to use for a little while before Outdoor Vitals kindly sent me a replacement in the 45 liter size. So I went from 60 to an Osprey Rook back to the 45. And let me tell you, this is one of the pieces of gear that totally surpassed my expectations. I was a little bit hesitant to use this pack when I was first getting started, but in the end, the amount of weight that this thing can carry comfortably just blew my mind considering it's an ultralight pack under two pounds. It's only one pound, 14.5 ounces, but I frequently was putting 35, 40, and even more pounds into this as I had some eight and 10 day food carries and I pack a lot of food. So I was really impressed with this pack, even the double pocket design and the zipper, which I thought was a weird gimmick to begin with, but by the end I was using on a daily basis. This backpack blew my expectations out of the water. I'm not gonna do a full review right now, I'll do that in another video, but needless to say, I was really happy with the Shadow Light 45 liter, and going from a Shadow Light to a different pack, back to the Shadow Light, I couldn't wait to get this back on my backpack, and this is what carried me to the end. A few things in the front, let's go through what I carried on me. This was, of course, TP, which was usually in this bag, and my toiletries. I'm not gonna go through all of these. I had a little bit of med kit in there, some earplugs, some uh, sunscreen, hand lotion, hand sanitizer, as well as a few towelettes. And of course, all my electrical goods in one of Hilltop Pack's uh, electrical ditty bags, and my first aid kit in a Hilltop Pack's um, bag. I love these bags because they actually have two compartments, and so I was able to have one side be some toiletries, and then the other side I had as my med kit, my repair kit, and my emergency kit, which I'll go through in a different video. Then, of course, my Vargo Dig Dig. I love this titanium shovel. It's excellent. And something that also really surprised me was this bad boy, a Rawology cork ball. I use this to stretch out my muscles after they were sore so frequently, loved it. Um, <laughs> these, I didn't start the trail with. I actually found them on the trail and decided to just steal them from somebody. They were left behind at a camp. They're actually women's glasses. Uh, my fiance would not let me live that down, but you know what, they worked, so I was happy for them. And something that I never used actually at all uh, was backup shoestring and my Ben's mosquito net. Then I had some like warm weather or some cold weather gear, um, as well as my buff, which I used for sweat around my forehead. I had a merino wool toque and earmuffs. I know that seems excessive, but sometimes when it's really windy, it really affects my ears. So I love these earmuffs, they're great. And then I had some four class mitts from Decathlon. Further outerwear that I had was my rain jacket, which is an Eddie Bauer Ascent rain jacket. 
and 66 degrees north had given me an awesome pair of Gore-Tex rain pants, which um, I never use rain pants, but the few times that I use these, I was pretty thankful for them. I didn't use them a whole lot. Uh, water filtration, of course, smart water, water bottles, and I ended up finishing the trail with the Sawyer Squeeze. Again, there's a whole story between my behind my water filtration system, but we'll talk about that another time. In my other pouch, I had this. This was my tripod. I had my tripod iPhone holder there, and I used this to film everything. And then, of course, my bear spray. For my trekking poles, I was using the Cascade Mountain Tech carbon fibers, the other ones holding up the old X-Mid right here, and I had some Gorilla Tape, of course, wrapped around that, and was really happy with these ultralight poles. Last thing on the backpack, one of the things I love about the Shadow Light is the massive pockets, and this was my uh, wallet. Just a Ziploc bag with a hair tie elastic band onto it so that it could clip into the pocket in the shadow light. On my right hand pocket, I had a bunch of like daily use things that I would just use a lot like mosquito repellent. Uh, at the end of the trip, it started getting really cold so I had hot hands on me in case I ever, ever needed it. Body glide, sunscreen, and <coughs> my bear horn. This is what I used in my bear horn. It's a Sea Sense fog horn, but I really love this piece of gear. And of course, the shadow light comes with a sit pad if you want it as a back pad. That was always handy to have as well. Comes to the second piece of gear that really blew my expectations out of the water. Something I thought I just kind of wanted as a safety feature, but turned out to be a staple for me was my Garmin Mini. Now they've just released an updated version of the Garmin Mini, which I haven't had a chance to test. This is the old model, but I honestly thought I was just gonna use this as an SOS device in case something went wrong. But this thing was so helpful. The communication that I used through the app on my phone ended up becoming a staple because there was some serious issues along the trail that I had to deal with and I would never have been able to fix those issues if I hadn't been able to text my girlfriend, now fiance, back home about what I needed, what I could get her to do. And honestly, even when I was just feeling down and lonely or needed some encouragement, being able to fire this thing up and shoot a text out I really underestimated how much value that would add to my trail. I will never go backpacking without this thing. And while I might not use it to text my fiance or my future wife a whole ton, um, having it in case I need to and in case she needs to get a hold of me is huge. Now let's talk about what's actually inside the backpack. This is my clothing bag. I'm gonna quickly go through not all the details of it, but just what I actually wore on the trail. I had. Outdoor Vitals ball cap, which I actually really liked and could almost use right now. This is another one of those pieces of gear that blew my expectations. This is the third one. This is the Outdoor Vitals Turn Merino Wool hoodie, which I just loved. I had never used a sun hoodie before and I was testing this for them and I loved this thing. It is so light at just over five ounces. It felt like I was wearing nothing. The hoodie was amazing because I could put the hood on and it would help collect some sweat but also shield me from the sun. And I just, I loved this thing. I took a huge tumble and ended up ripping up the side on the side of a cliff on one of the days. But even still, I brought another t-shirt the next time at my resupply but I still chose to use this instead, even though it had a massive hole in it because I just really, really love this thing. Then I had my ex officio underwear and of course my favorite Satu pants. I'm wearing them right now. Love these pants. These get an honorary, like blew my expectations out of the water. Again, they didn't really blew my expectations out of the water because I expected them to be amazing and they were amazing. If you haven't tried these pants, they're awesome. Um, I had another ditty bag earlier on when I had less clothes. At the end, it got really cold, so I actually needed a lot of warmer gear. And so I had about, uh, well, I didn't quite have four. I had three piece, pairs of socks. I had a heavy duty wool sock, a hiking sock, and then I had a wool liner. Earlier on in the trail, I just used a synthetic liner. All of these socks are from Fox River. I've been using Fox River socks since I started backpacking. And so I just love their stuff. They're made in America, great quality. This is something else from Decathlon. It's their fleece pants, which I used on really cold nights to sleep with. But earlier on on the trail, I was using my dragon wool outdoor vitals 
uh, leggings, but later on when it got really cold, these became my hiking leggings and these were my sleeping leggings. This is of course my custom ultralight uh, bear bag, which I didn't use as a bear bag, but just as a stuff sack from Hilltop Pack. Love this thing. If you haven't checked out custom gear from Hilltop Pack, check them out. Two more pieces of clothing. This next piece of gear is my fourth piece of gear that just blew my expectations out of the water. Not only did it blow my expectations out of the water, it has fast become one of my favorite pieces of backpacking gear. Uh, at the start of the trail, it would have been between the X-Mid, but by the end of the trail, it was my Ventus hoodie. I love this thing. I use this thing every day almost, even at home. I can't imagine going backpacking without it. It's only seven ounces and it has a windbreaking capability. It handles moisture amazingly. It's warm. It was just so versatile. It was by far the most versatile piece that I had on the trail. And that's, that's just why I love it. The Ventus is seriously amazing. Oh, I also had the dragon wool hoodie that I used as a sleep shirt at the end of the trail, but I've somehow misplaced it. It's probably somewhere in my boxes because I've been moving. This is the last piece of clothing that I have, and it is the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Men's Pullover, or used to be called the Marsupial. I don't know if it's still going by those names. Um, and instead of bringing a puffy, this was my puffy. It's a synthetic puffy. Um, I absolutely love this on the really cold mornings and really cold nights. I could put this over top of my Ventus or just by itself and it kept me so warm. So that's all my clothing. Let's talk cook kit. Okay, so I totally forgot to say what my actual base weight was in this entire video. So I'm going to put my entire base weight right here and let's get right back to unpacking this bag. So for my bear bag, I used the Ursac XL, which couldn't quite fit all the food that I needed into it, but after just a couple of days, it could. So bet before it could fit everything, I also had an extra uh, wet bag, dry bag, whatever you want to call these things, ditty bag that I used. And of course, my quick kit had my uh, Human Gear Duo Spork, which I absolutely loved, and a 550 Tox Titanium mug, which I loved. I put my homemade windscreen in there, a little bit of a ditty cloth, Bic Mini, and of course, everyone's favorite, BRS stove. Put it all in there and sealed it up with an elastic band. That was my cook kit. I had a Nylo Flume pack liner, which I just love. These things are so durable. durable. I could actually trust this. Um, I had one or two break along the way, so I had some replacements that was so good. Um, and I had for my sleeping pad, the X-Lite, question mark? I went through three sleeping pads on the trail and this was the last one and I absolutely hated this thing. I'll talk about that in another video. Just, it worked, it lasted, it, it was warm, I'll give it that, but just, I, I don't wanna sleep on that thing ever again. Uh, and this was its stuff sack. Um, then I had for my quilt, the 15 degree Fahrenheit Stormloft top quilt. I put a few things in the bottom here. I have the Hikinchur pillow that I used at the very end. I had the Aegis Max um, down hood, which I used on really cold nights. Justin Outdoors, my buddy, gave me a couple of down booties, so I was really happy with that. And I have, like Dan Becker, my buddy, I have a secondary pillow. The issue is, these pillows are garbage. I've gone through three or four of them. They just break so easily. That was actually a packing bubble that I had from something from Amazon way back in the day. And it's the only one that kind of lasted, but it was that like thick plastic. Like, like look at this. It, was, it just it was not lovely to sleep with and have between my knees as my knee pillow, but it worked um, sort of. It would deflate over the night, but it, it lasted. And then of course I would have my pad straps in the bottom of my quilt. And the last piece of gear that just blew my expectations out of the water is actually this quilt. Um, I wasn't 100% sure if I would love using quilts. I wasn't sure that they were for me. I knew I wanted one for this trip, but I honestly thought I might not ever use quilts again. But Outdoor Vitals really designed an excellent quilt that was designed 
for me as a ground sweet sleeper, not for a hammock camper. And so this quilt not only kept me warm at 15 degrees Fahrenheit, it was that perfect warm enough. It allowed me to stay cool during one of the hottest heat waves of the century, um, but also was just super comfortable. So I love this quilt. The reality is I have so much more to say about all of this gear and all the gear that I've used. So I will just put a link to my playlist on gear reviews. You could check what I've said about some other gear that I've used in the past as well as when I release these videos, I will update that. So check back often. I hope that you got some ideas of some gear that can take you on your wildest dream hike, wherever that might be. And remember, keep moving forward.